Morning, everyone. Today is the first day in December, and a few days ago, Oceanic released their dive computer app for the Apple Watch Ultra, which I talked about back in September. Now, I couldn't wait to get in the water, so I drove 70 miles through the desert to get to Lake Pleasant, which is just north of Phoenix. Now, I've never dove in fresh water before, let alone a lake, so I'm pretty excited about uh, what I might experience here. I have no idea, which is kind of fun. Uh, I just know that the lake is cold and the visibility here is not that great, but I'm always willing to be surprised. By the way, the lake is 11 and a half square miles, which means that I don't even know where to begin. So I hired a dive boat charter called the Cyborg Pirate. Now, before I get into the water, I want to briefly talk to you about why a dive computer is necessary. Here on the surface, I'm breathing air, which is composed of 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Your body burns oxygen, but nitrogen is inert, meaning that it doesn't react with anything and it's simply dissolved in your body tissues at the pressure you're breathing. However, once you make a dive, the nitrogen pressure in the air you're breathing is higher than the pressure of the nitrogen dissolved in your body tissues. Each time you take a breath, the nitrogen goes from a higher pressure to a lower pressure inside your body tissue and continues to do so until there is equilibrium. Now, equilibrium wouldn't be a problem at all as long as you plan on staying underwater indefinitely. However, you do have to surface, so the reverse happens. When a diver ascends, it's now the pressure of the nitrogen in the body tissue that is higher than the pressure of the nitrogen in the air you're breathing. So as long as you don't ascend too quickly, the nitrogen can safely dissolve out of the body tissue into the bloodstream and then exhaled during breathing. However, if you ascend too quickly, the nitrogen comes out of solution faster than the body can eliminate it and bubbles begin to form in your tissues, causing what's called decompression sickness, also called the bends. What a dive computer does is manage your depth and time underwater by applying a decompression model or algorithm to track the dissolved nitrogen in your body so that you can safely return to the surface without getting decompression sickness. So let's look at a few of the features of the Oceanic app that you'll find important. Now, I'm not gonna go through every feature of the app because Oceanic has some really good tutorial videos on their webpage, and I recommend that you watch those when you get a chance. Now, the first feature you wanna enable is auto launch on your watch. You'll open the settings app, then tap general. Scroll down to auto launch and tap that. Scroll to the bottom and make sure auto launch is enabled. Tap the app button, then tap Oceanic Plus. Doing this will automatically launch the app once the watch is submerged. And for me, this is a fail safe that ensures that I don't have to remember to manually launch the app before every dive. The next thing you'll find helpful is to add a dive app specific complication to your watch face. On my watch, I have my dive settings in the upper right, my no decompression planner in the lower right, my surface timer in the lower left, and my okay to fly in the upper left. I'll tap the settings complication because there are some items we're talking about. Tap dive settings. There are two modes, scuba and snorkeling. The snorkeling option is free, but the scuba option is a recurring subscription and it's 80 bucks per year or 10 bucks per month. Under scuba settings, you can set the level of conservatism by choosing a gradient factor. Plus two is the most conservative and zero is the least conservative. In all cases, they're designed to work with the underlying Bullman algorithm so that you return safely to the surface without bubble formation. I'll set this for plus one to be extra conservative. Under the gas setting, you can choose air or nitrox. I'll be diving air today. If you want your watch to give you an alarm when you reach a certain depth, time, or low no decompression limit, you can enable those here. I'm gonna set my target depth to 70 feet. Back to the main watch service, I also have a no decompression planner. I can choose a time or a surface interval for my next dive, then calculate my no decompression limit based on that maximum depth I enter here. We'll look at this once again when I'm back on the boat after my first dive. 
Now there's one other thing I should mention. If you're diving at any altitude above sea level, the dive app will automatically take that into account and adjust your node decompression limit accordingly. The elevation is 1,700 feet above sea level. So automatically I know that I'll have less bottom time than if I was diving in my usual spots in Southern California. So with that, let's go diving. So we began our descent using the anchor line and followed it along the bottom. The visibility was pretty bad, maybe 15 feet at best. The bottom is a submerged riverbed that was created by several dams going back to the 19th century. Once I was at the bottom, I checked my watch. The number at the top is my current depth in feet, and the number below that is my no decompression limit. As you go deeper, this is the number that you need to keep your eye on, because it'll tell you when you need to be back on the surface or face having to perform a decompression stop. Below that is a bar graph that visually represents your no decompression time. When you start your dive, you'll see four green bars, and as you go deeper, these bars will begin to recede until a single yellow bar remains, letting you know that you should start your ascent soon. The number below the graph is your actual bottom time, and the number below that is the time to surface based on your safe ascent rate of 33 feet per minute, plus any decompression time and your safety stop. The number on the bottom is the current water temperature. At the bottom of this lake in December, it's a chilly 59 degrees. I followed Captain Forrest, my dive buddy, a bit deeper. As we descended, the water took on an eerie green color. This is due to the excessive algae in the water this time of year. He had a strobe light attached to his rig so that I could locate him. There were many crevices in the bedrock to explore, and some even large enough to swim through, which of course I did. As for fish, I saw a blue catfish and a largemouth bass. I descended deeper into the green abyss and checked my watch again. I'm now at 57 feet with 33 minutes of no decompression time and a current bottom time of nearly 11 minutes. Once I descended below the target depth that I set on my watch during pre-dive, it started vibrating and I could easily feel it through my wetsuit. If you want to go deeper, you can dismiss this warning by pressing the action button on the side of the watch. However, any warning that appears in red, you will not be able to dismiss. Once I returned to the shallower depth, my watch pinged me again to perform a three minute safety stop at 18 feet. And I was happy to have this warning appear haptically and visually. Yes, my first freshwater dive. It's pretty pea soupy down there. So as soon as I get back to the surface, it started tracking my surface time. Got a little bit of gra a graph there, for my bottom time, and then how long I've been on the surface. All right, so I finished my first dive and I'm about to go in the water again, do a second dive. Now this is called repetitive diving. And if you're old school, this is called bounce diving. And what that ba basically means is you come up to the surface and you still have residual nitrogen in your, in your body tissues before going into uh, your next dive. And so you can't, you just start off with a blank slate and the dive computer has to track that for you because if you go down to the same depth, you don't have as much time because again, you already have residual nitrogen in your tissues. So the watch will factor that in and help you plan for your next dive, which is what I'm gonna show you now using the no decompression planner on the watch. All right, as I said earlier in the video, I have a complication set up for the surface time. If I tap that, it shows me here that uh, I've been on the surface for 59 minutes, almost an hour, and uh, my have my no fly time, which I can't get on a plane for 11 hours, which is fine. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not flying anywhere. But this is very important. The dive app knows I've been on the surface for almost an hour. And this will help me plan my dive. So I'm going to go back to the main area of the app. And I'm going to go into the no decompression planner. Here you can choose your next dive. I know I'm going to be back in the water in one hour. Well, close to one hour. It could be an hour and you can actually be even more specific. You can say I'm hour and maybe 20 minutes because I still have to suit up and get all my gear on. So an hour and 20 minutes is when I'll be back in the water again. And why that's important is that you can then calculate how much bottom time you have at a given depth. So here at 60 feet, I have 36 minutes that I can spend at that depth. And uh, I'll go the other direction just to so you can see this. I'm going to boost the depth to let's say 80 feet. And here you can see 
my maximum no decompression limit is 17 minutes, so a lot less time. And typically what you want to do when you uh, plan uh, repetitive dives is your deepest dive should be your first dive, and each dive after that should be um, successively shallower. So on my first dive, I did hit 80 feet, so I definitely won't, don't want to go there again. So I'll probably, for the next dive, I'm just going to be really conservative, and I'm going to set the depth for 50 feet. There we go, which gives me a 57 minute bottom time. See this, this means scuba Steve. On our second dive, I was curious how the Oceanic app compared to the popular Shearwater dive computer my buddy was wearing. At 38 feet, Forrest filmed his computer and here they are side by side. On both devices, the depth and bottom times are the same. The only difference is the no decompression times. His device reports 99 minutes, and mine reports 84 minutes. You'll recall that I set the gradient factor at a more conservative value during pre-dive, which is probably why my number is more conservative than his. Toward the end of the dive, the app reminded me of my safety stop before heading back to the surface. So it was time to hoist the Jolly Roger and head back to shore. Okay, so we're back on the surface and we packed our gear in the car. And I wanna talk a little bit about how the Oceanic Dive app works with the iPhone because it's really slick. Uh, they synchronize perfectly so you get all your information on your phone as a digital logbook. So for example, on the home screen, I could see here that I have a maximum time underwater for today of 50 minutes and 11 seconds. The number of dives here in the corner, um, the cumulative total depth and the water temperature. If I tap logbook at the bottom, I can actually see my dives. Now, one of these dives I know is a false dive. In fact, it'll tell me here that I did a dive to five feet and that's only because I couldn't get the watch app to trigger. So um, that's not a real dive. So the real dive is at the top and the bottom. So here I have a, one dive at 23 minutes and 50 seconds uh, to 60 feet and the other one at 26 minutes and 12 seconds to 82 feet. So that was my first dive. So if I tap that, it brings me to this screen where I can see the location on a map and I can even share my dive data. I'm going to tap the uh, share button in the corner and uh, choose, you can choose a dark or a light mode and then you tap share and then I can go ahead and send this to my wife so she knows that I'm safe and I'm back on the surface and I'll just type a quick message to her. Had a great dive. And I will send that to her. So all the information that was gathered on my watch is now on my phone and it's really great. I have a history of my dive and I don't even necessarily need to fill out a logbook. There's options in here for, you know, typing in the visibility and the depth and all that. I didn't do any of that, but I could have. I just wanted to show you how these two um, apps work together. So overall, my feelings about the dive app, it worked great, I could read it underwater, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. I found that I had a little bit of difficulty reading it on the, the watch face, some of the uh, numbers were rather small, but that's probably because, you know, my older eyes and I didn't have any diopters in my mask to magnify it. Uh, that's a small nitpicky thing. If I had any nitpick at all, it would be on the price. You know, it's $80 a year, uh, forever and over time it's gonna get really expensive to run this app. Now you could spend $10 a month and I believe there is a mode for uh, using the app for a day use. It's Right now it's priced at 99 cents and I don't know if that is a, a one-time deal or you could use that day use uh, price whenever you need to go diving. That's not clear to me. I couldn't find the answer to it but still a great app. I think the price should be way less than it is. So that's my take on the Oceanic Dive Computer app. Hope you enjoyed that. Leave your comments below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and thank you for watching.